Good morning. This is my first time with you all. I've been with you all together, but this is my first time with uh, just the high school. So, uh, to tell you the truth, I'm a little, and I can really work with the little kids because I'm kind of on their level. But when I get up here to y'all, I'm kind of a little bit um, um, nervous. But anyway, I was thinking the other day about things that I do, things that I say that I know better. And after I do it or after I say it, I think, man, if I could just take it back. Have you ever done that? You, you ever said something and you go, man, did I say that? That was about the stupidest thing I've ever said. Or, you know, why did I do that? Man, that was dumb. And if I could just take it back up. The other day I was eating a banana. I love bananas. Healthy fruit, and you can tell I eat healthy all the time. And I, I looked at the banana, and I thought, you know, that reminds me of a good sermon. And my thought this morning is, how do you close a banana after you've opened it? Now, you know, we, we can all open a banana. No problem. And we've all done this. We've all, all eaten half a banana. We go, man, I think I'll just save the rest of it for later. And so we do this trick. And we come back in a few minutes and it has started to die. I mean, it's just funky looking. Well, I, I thought, you know, how do you close a banana? I guess I could maybe get a stapler and try to staple it. Well, that wouldn't work. And then I thought, well, duct tape. <laughs> duct tape fixes everything. If you get the right duct tape, it's going to fix everything. So I thought, well, I could just put duct tape on it. And then I thought, then my wife would come in and in the fruit bowl on the counter, she would find a banana with duct tape on it, and that wouldn't work. <laughs> then I thought, well, scotch tape, because... You can put scotch tape on it, and it's, quote, unquote, invisible. So no one's going to see it. Well, that's still not going to seam all the seams and keep all the air from it. So I thought, you know, that's a whole lot like life. We do things all the time, and we think, how can I fix it? Or how can... I take it back. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Great passage of Scripture. Powerful passage of Scripture. It says, if we confess our sins, man, God, I want to fix it. I want to close this banana. I want to shut my mouth. I want to take back something that I did hurtful to someone. I want to erase a sin that I committed. I want to fix it. I can't do it. But the Bible says if we confess our sins, now I want you to notice the next phrase. He is faithful. It's one of my favorite hymns in all the hymn books. Is great is our faithfulness. I love that hymn. Because it simply tells me that God is faithful all the time. Now if I confess and he is faithful, look what it says. He is faithful and righteous some translations say just. But he's righteous. He, he's all right all the time. To forgive. To close my banana. To fix my peeled banana. To fix my <clears throat> mouth that I let spurt off when it should be to fix my attitude that was bad. The 
But then he says, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. And I love the next word. In every translation, this word is the same. It's a three-letter word. All my unrighteousness, all my sin, all my mistakes, if you want to say it that way. But he is willing, and all I've got to do is confess. The other day, I was up here at the school, and I didn't have a problem with it, but a little preschooler. Pre-K came up to me and poked me in the stomach and said, and I quote, Huh, you must have eaten too many potato chips. What makes you so fat? And I thought, how am I going to respond to this? And I went, wow, that was very, you know, unrespectful. I mean, do you not respect your elders? And so I saw Miss Heather and the child was in Miss Heather's class, and I said, do you not teach your children respect? And so we made a big joke out of it. But I thought to myself, how many times did I do that? And really hurt somebody. Said something, and I, I may not have meant anything by it, but I really hurt somebody. Or I really did something dumb. And I knew it was wrong. That's what I do. I said, God, I messed up one more time. And God, will you forgive me where I messed up here? Young people, let me tell you something. <clears throat> this is a fact. Every one of us, no matter how righteous we may appear, are going to mess up. We're going to fall off the way. We're going to say something we shouldn't say. We're going to do something we shouldn't do. There wasn't but one perfect one, and that was Jesus. So we all have our imperfections. But if we confess, then he is faithful to forgive. So I encourage you today. When you mess up, don't let it get you. To say, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. And go to that person and say, I am sorry. Now, I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm sorry. Sometimes the only confession you need is to God. And say, God, I messed up and you know I did. Every night before I retire, the last thing I do before I go to bed, I say, God, all of the mess-ups I've had today, some of them I know, some of them I don't. But God, I ask you to forgive them all. And the Bible says he is faithful to forgive if we confess. We need that today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, this is the day that you've made. And Lord, I am going to rejoice in it. I'm going to enjoy it. Now God, I understand there are going to be times that I'm going to mess up. But God, show them to me where I can confess them to you. And see your forgiveness. I love you. I thank you for Jesus. <coughs> it's in his name that I pray. Amen. Have a great day.